Greetings. Survival Doc here on the subject of national health care. When people ask me if I'm in favor of national health care or socialized medicine, I reply by saying, are you crazy? Our government officials are so corrupt and incompetent that they can't even balance a checkbook. Who in the right mind would want to put them in charge of our health care? These are the guys who told us back in 1983 that if we would allow them to double our Social Security taxes, they would establish a trust fund that would ensure that Social Security and Medicare would never go bankrupt. We gave them our okay, and they have since robbed the Social Security trust fund of every single dime. And now baby boomers are looking at their retirement with fear and dread during the worst economic depression this country has seen since the Great Depression. If there was any sanity left in this country, we would all march on Washington right now, pull all these criminals out of their offices, tar and feather them, and then run them out of Washington on a rail. I have practiced chiropractic medicine in this country for 26 years. I have dealt with Medicare and insurance. Based on my experiences, I have no doubt that socialized medicine in this country is going to be a disaster. Ask any war veteran who has had to deal with our VA hospitals what they think about government-run medicine. And that's not to mention the fact that we are completely broke. Hey, has anyone noticed the national debt? Certainly not the loonies and crooks in Washington. Well, you might say, what about all the people who don't have health insurance and who can't afford medical care? Well, I remember a time when no one had health insurance. People could afford medical care because it was not so expensive before government and insurance companies got involved. That was when the free market was in control, when people were paying for their own health care and there was competition among medical providers. And for those who really couldn't afford it, hospitals and doctors rarely turned them away. Take a look at the names on our prominent hospitals. St. John's, St. Anthony's, DePaul, Barnes Jewish Hospital, Missouri Baptist Hospital, to name a few. Catholic and other charities raised money to take care of people who couldn't afford it. People donated money to help the poor and no one went without care. The reason people don't donate as much today is because government and insurance got involved. People are taxed so heavily to pay for the huge administrative cost of health care that they don't feel like giving anymore. Why should they give? The government is going to take their money anyway and leave them precious little. If the government would stop taxing people so heavily, you would be am amazed at how much people would give to help their fellow brothers and sisters. What has the government ever run more efficiently than the private sector? It is a well-established fact that governments do not use economic resources as efficiently as the private sector. Peter Schiff said it best when he said, to think of government as a cancer feeding off the private sector. And whoever said that health insurance should be used for routine health care anyway, like physical exams and the like? The purpose of insurance is to cover catastrophes that you would not otherwise be able to afford. Most of us could afford to go for a routine medical checkup if there was no insurance involved. But introduce insurance into the picture and all the paperwork and the bureaucrats, and not only do costs go up, but since the patient doesn't have to pay out of his pocket, there is no shopping around and no competition to keep prices low. The free market is the answer to our health care problems, just as it is the answer to all of our economic problems. Government has created the mess that we are in. It is nothing short of insanity to expect the very people who got you into a problem to be able to get you out of it. Every time government tinkers with a problem, they make things worse, and then they say, see, we need more government regulation here. They create a small problem and then their fix makes the small problem into a bigger problem. The solution is always the same, more government. Then they make the bigger problem even bigger, and so it goes. Ron Paul, Texas congressman and physician, 
and one of the very few exceptions in the Washington Madhouse, had this to say in his wonderful book, The Revolution. As a physician, I never accepted Medicare or Medicaid money from the government, and instead offered cut rate or free services to those who could not afford care. Before those programs came into existence, every physician understood that he or she had a responsibility toward the less fortunate, and free medical care for the poor was the norm. People had insurance policies for serious health problems, but paid cash for routine doctor visits. That makes more sense. Insurance is intended to protect against unforeseen and catastrophic events like fire, floods, or grave illnesses. Insurance, in short, is supposed to measure risk. It has nothing to do with that now. Something has obviously gone wrong with the system when we need insurance for routine visits and checkups, which are an entirely predictable part of our lives. Before 1965, physicians and hospitals, like other private entities competing for your dollar, strove to charge the minimum. Because payment now comes so largely from third parties, they instead charge the maximum. Ludwig von Mises once said, government interventions create unintended consequences that lead to calls for further intervention and so on into a destructive spiral of more and more government control. During the early 1970s, Congress embraced HMOs in order to address concerns about rising health care costs. But it was Congress itself that had caused health care costs to spiral by removing control over the health care dollar from so many consumers in the 1960s, and thus eliminating any incentive to pay attention to costs when selecting health care. Now, Congress wants to intervene yet again to address problems caused by HMOs, the very product of still earlier interventions. Now that HMOs are all but universally unpopular, the very politicians who brought them to us are joining the bandwagon to denounce them, hoping the American people will forget or never be told that the federal government itself virtually mandated HMOs in the first place. Those who favor national health care schemes should take a good hard look at our veterans' hospitals. There is your national health care. These institutions are a national disgrace. If this is the care the government dispenses to those it honors as its most heroic and ad admirable citizens, why should anyone else expect to be treated any better? Folks, you cannot expect the people who got you into a problem to get you out of it, especially when they are demonstrating to us every single day that they fully intend to keep on doing what they have been doing all along. Our economy is on the verge of complete and total collapse because of government intervention. Remember, these are the criminals who stole all that Social Security money that we have paid into the system for our entire lives. Do we really want to put them in charge of our health care system? To do so would be complete insanity. The solution to our problems is not more government. The solution is the free market. We have to make government smaller, not larger. We have to march on Washington, pull all the criminals out of their offices, tar and feather them, and run them out of Washington on a rail. Who's with me? This is Survival Doc reminding you, be prepared or be prepared to be fleeced.